It's working. Right. I am Milton Curry, an MD, who uh, is now retired from a practice of 60 years, and who <coughs> has gone through various changes, very uh, from uh, general practice to military service, and finally to psychiatric service and. Uh, the practice of psychoanalysis. Uh, the latter has occupied about 50 years of my life. What well, question? <coughs> what was your occupation and what were you doing in 1953, March? Oh, yeah. It was around, uh, it was in 1953 that I was involved my psychoanalytic training, as well as serving as a, a consultant psychiatrist to the Children's Court of the uh, City of New York. What else? How did you come to know Lee Harvey Oswald? Oh, it was there that I had the occasion to meet uh, Lee Harvey Oswald on the day that I was terminating my relationship with the court. What day was that? What month was that? I remember it as the last Friday in March of 53. Uh, what were you doing that day? That day was moving out day for me. I was cleaning out the desk drawers and uh, preparing to vacate the office. It was while I was in the process of doing this that a uh, secretary from, out, from outside came in and asked me if I would see a uh, probation officer who was having some problem preparing a report for the court. Uh, I took this as a final challenge and uh, asked to see the probation officer. He came in with his material and uh, after reading the material that he presented to me, I was a bit perplexed as to how to organize a reply, and I told him I would feel more comfortable if I had time to spend with the individual who was involved, with the child who was involved. Uh, it would help me to formulate my own independent decisions. What material did he say, did he provide to you prior to your seeing Lee Oswald? He provided me with his notes. He provided me with the information that the child was uh, brought to the attention of the court for truancy. And uh, he also uh, had something in his material about... Uh, the condition of the individual while at youth house. So it's your understanding by reading the file that Lee Harvey Oswald had previously been in the youth house prior to March of 1953 when you interviewed him? That was the impression I had at that time. And uh, there was really no time to, to uh, check on it more thoroughly. Uh, so in response uh, to my reply to his request, he informed me that the individual, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, was available. And uh, would I see him? And I said I would. Uh, he then exited 
and uh, there next appeared in the doorway a uh, rather thin, uh, short young man in knickers. I was immediately attracted to his way of entry. He had one foot in the door when he looked about the room in a studied fashion as though looking to see if it was all clear. He finally came in and sat down and uh, I tried to start a conversation but he demonstrated uh, that he was not reachable at first. Uh, since I'd been in, in similar situations before, I used an approach of talking about myself, uh, talking about other situations, uh, explaining to him that the whole purpose of our being together was to see if I could help him and help this probation officer so that a uh, helpful outcome could result. He then opened up and began to talk uh, about himself and his uh, family background, etc. What did he say about his family background? Uh, surprisingly, he presented himself as the, uh, uh, I believe, the third child, or the youngest son, certainly, of uh, a family that had no father figure. His father had died uh, when he was so small that he couldn't remember him. Were those his words? Hmm? Were those his words? His father died when he was so small he couldn't remember him? Uh, it may not have been his exact words, but he uh, gave me the impression that that was what happened since he had no recollection of a father figure in the house. Uh, Did he have stepfathers? He spoke of having uh, uh, some uh, several stepfathers. Uh, I was informed that his mother had five marriages, but spent only about seven years in a state of marriage. He also spoke of his brothers, uh, who were very antagonistic and who uh, how shall we say it, who uh, also uh, were treated him badly. They would infuriate him, and when he charged them uh, in, a, in attack, they would simply hold him at, an, at arm's distance by grasping his head, and he would flail the air, thus becoming more and more aggravated. Um, so far as the truancy is concerned, he revealed that he had uh, no motivation to go to school, and also a part of this uh, lack of attachment to school was due to the fact that the family moved many times uh, before he could uh, establish any roots in a community or establish friends. So he uh, lost interest in others. He lost interest in having friends and spent time by himself. Did he mention any places that he lived? No, we did not go into that. But 